GCSE Maths, paper one, one hour. So for the first question, we want to increase this by 7%. There's a, a nice way to do this. We can multiply by 1.07, or if you prefer the multiplier method, we can multiply it by 1 plus 7 over 100. This is the same as 1.07, and we end up with an answer of 599.2, which in money is 599.20 cents. The next question says, he gets a pay increase of 7%. The pay increase is by 42 euros, which means 7% is 42 euros. So we can write that down. 42 euros is worth 7%. And what we're trying to do is trying to work out what it what his salary was or weekly pay was before the increase. That's 100%. So there's a way to get there. We can just go from 7% to 1% and then from 1% to 100%. If we divide this by 7, that ends up at 6 euros. And if you times this by 100, you end up with 600 euros, which is the answer to the question. The next question, we have the area of the shaded region. What we can do here is we can work out the area of the rectangle and then subtract both of the circles from that. So the area of the rectangle is 110 times 55. And then we can minus two of the circles. So it's two times pi r squared. Remember, r is 15. So two times pi r squared. And when we type this into the calculator, we get 4,300 no, so 4,636.283. We ran this to three significant figures. So three significant figures, one, two, three. That's this column. So it should be 4640. Next question. Enlarge this shape by scale factor three, center O. You pick a point on the shape. Let's choose this one. The center is here at zero. How do you get from the center, uh, from the origin to this dot here? Well, we go one square to the right and two up. One right, two up. And if we enlarge that by scale factor three, we're going to go three squares to the right and six squares up times by three times by three. So we start at the origin. Okay, go three right and six up. This point here represents the new uh, like left-hand side of the shape. All you need to do now is draw the shape three times bigger. So if you if you notice, it goes one square diagonal, so we go three squares diagonal. It goes one square diagonal down here, so we go three squares diagonal. One square at the top, so three squares at the top, and so on. And then this should be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there you go. The next one. This three marks, you have to say three things. Okay, first mark is for saying that it's a rotation. We're going from triangle B to triangle C. So let's take a look at this. Triangle B to triangle C. So if I just use the tracing paper to show you, you can draw over triangle B. And you have to think about where to keep your pencil pressed. This is called the center point. So let's have a go. If we try, say, try zero, zero, because your example would love to use zero, zero. Failing that, try somewhere else. Let's see if this point works. Just before I rotate it, I'll just draw an arrow pointing there. Okay. So let's rotate that. So that's the center point, 1 minus 1. And I've, can you see that the arrow is, it was pointing north, and now it's pointing east. So it's gone 90 degrees clockwise. And the center point, uh, as you can see there, is 1 minus 1. OK, 
Next question. So on this question, um, you need to remember what the angles add up to in a five-sided shape. So the formula is this. You take away two from the number of sides and then multiply it by 180. So five take away two is three. Three times 180 is 540. So 540 degrees in the shape. All of the angles inside this shape add up to make 540 degrees. Okay. So we have something like this. Add all of the angles up inside the shape. So we have 2x plus 37 plus 3x plus 90 plus 130 plus 3x minus 5. And that all equals 540. And when you tidy up and solve this equation, we end up with x equals 36. This question, so we have Ben, Carlos, and Delana. So um, they share the ratios. Uh, the, it, the money is divided in the ratio 2 to 3 to 5. So it's shared between all of them. So we can add these parts together, get 10 parts. 760 divided by 10 gives us 76. That's worth one part, one ratio one share however you want to describe it and then ben gets two parts carlos gets three parts and delana gets five parts so we have two times 76 three times 76 and five times 76 which gives us 152 228 380 okay ben gives half of his share to charity so Half of 152 is 76. Carlos gives two-thirds of his share to charity. If you want to work out two-thirds of 228, type it in like this, two-thirds times 228. That gives you oops, uh, 152. And then Delana gives 30%. You could do 30% like 30 over 100 or even 0.3 times 380 she gives 114 add all these amounts together this is the total amount given to the charity and that's 342 next one so the line is parallel that means it has the same gradient the gradient of this line is minus 3 it's the same gradient. It's in the form y equals mx plus c. So it's y equals minus 3x plus c. Substitute the coordinate in to work out the value of c. Remember it's x and y. So minus 4 equals minus 3 times 6 plus c. Do a bit of rearranging. You will end up with c equals 14. And then on the answer line, y equals either minus 3x plus 14 or 14 minus 3x if you want to write it a little bit tidier, which is fine. Next, this one is standard form. So 5.4 times 10 to the power of, so it starts here and it goes backwards to this point. If you count there, there's um, seven spaces because we're going backwards, it's negative seven. The population of Denmark is 57.6%. So 57.6% is out of 100. So 57.6 out of 100 times 9.92 times 10 to the power 6. Okay. And when you type that into the calculator, we end up with 5713920. Round this to two significant figures and in standard form. Two significant figures is here. So the number would be 57 and then 0000. zero, 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 zero. Write this in standard form, 5.7 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay. The next sentence says China is K times the population of Hong Kong, like this. China is equal to K times the population of Hong Kong. Work out the value of K. So a bit of rearranging will tell you that C over H is equal to K. So you take China's population and divide it by Hong Kong's population 
you end up with the value of k like this 1.4 times 10 to the power of 9 over 7.4 times 10 to the power of 6 type that into the calculator and then round it to the nearest whole number we end up with 189 next question Okay, complete the cumulative frequency, just like a running total. So you have 15, 40, 120, 170, 190, 200. Plot the points. So you have to be careful with the scale here. Uh, two squares is worth one. So 15 is... So 15 is about there. 40, 40, remember to plot at the end points. Okay, you can join from zero, or you can join from the first one to the last one. It's entirely up to you. That's good. Find an estimate for the median mile. Draw a line across uh, in the halfway. So the maximum frequency is 200. So if we half that, we draw a line across at 100. Draw a line down there. Read off the value. The mark scheme accepts 54 to 58 anywhere in that region. Use your graph to find an estimate of the number of students who gain more than 75 marks. Find 75 marks at the bottom. So you've got 60 there, 80 there, 70 is halfway. So 75 is halfway between 70 and 80. Draw a line across, draw a line, sorry, draw a line up and across. And it's the bit above because it says more than 75 marks. The mark scheme accepts any answers between 38 and 44. Next. Okay, we need a common denominator here because we're adding fractions so the common denominator is out of 3 and 7 is 21 draw your little arrow here what do you times 7 by to get to 21 same with 3 times by 3 times by 7 do the same to the top so the, the, the numerator multiplied by 3 okay so we have 3 brackets 2w minus 3 plus and the next one is 7 brackets 2w minus 5 and that is all equal to 2. Okay, if you expand on the top we end up with 6w minus 9 plus 14w minus 35. There's a divide by 21 here. That goes over, becomes the opposite of divide by 21 which is times by 21. So 2 times 21 is 42. If we tidy this up we end up with 20w equals 86. Divide 86 by 20, we end up with 4.3. The next question, Henry takes at random two coins from the bag, the probability that both five. So if you were to, we don't need to draw a tree diagram for this bit, but it's five followed by five. So how many five P's are there? There's five out of eight there. And next time, there will only be four out of seven. So if you multiply across, we end up with 20 over 56. This cancels down. If you want to cancel it down, divide them both by 5. You get 5 over 14. I'll write here 4. The next one is a bit more complicated. Okay, um, There is quite an easy way to do this, but it's not the most obvious. Um, so... The total value of the coins is 6p. You can write down every single option. Um, there are some alternatives here. So let's just take a look at this tree. The tree looks like this. So 5, 2, and 1. Coming off each one, we've got 5, 2, and 1. Five and five makes ten, so this is good. This is good, and this is good. Two and five is good. One and five is good, and that's it. Now it's this top one that I'm interested in because 
what you can do is either you can work out three of these separately or you can work out all three of these ones together and you can do it like this you can say it's the probability of choosing a five the first time and then it could be either a five or a two or a one the second time because they all match you see they will all give um, a total which is at least 6p so you can do that as follows the probability of 5 the first time is 5 over 8 and next time the combined probability of getting a 5 or a 2 over, or a 1 well if you think about it the combined probability of getting a 5 2 or 1 there's 7 coins left and 7 out of the 7 of them are either a 5 or a 2 or a 1 so it's going to be times by 7 out of 7 and that's a whole one for the next one you have a 2 the probability of 2 followed by 5 that's 2 eighths times by 5 sevenths or you have the probability of a 1 followed by a 5 that's 1 eighth times 5 sevenths and what you do is you work all of these out and then add the results together and when you do that you get 25 over 28 okay so for this next question we need to work out the size of angle CEA so if we kind of uh, take a, an x-ray if you like of the um, pyramid this is the triangle that I'm going to focus on if I draw that separately from the diagram it looks a bit like this you have E a here and C here both of these sides are 12 I'm trying to work out this angle here CEA I just the problem is I don't know what AC is now if you look down on the shape so that it's like a bird's eye view you will see that there's a square on the bottom no, so not a square sorry it's a, a rectangle on the bottom so let's draw that rectangle then the rectangle on the bottom looks like this 15 by 10 AC is the line that goes from this corner to this corner now we can see that's we can find that out using Pythagoras' theorem so let's do that it's the square root of 10 squared plus 15 squared which happens to be 5 root 13 when you type that into the calculator so using Pythagoras' theorem it's because this is a and this is b and the diagonal one is c opposite the right angle so 5 root 13 and I have a non right angle triangle here and I'm trying to work out an angle in it I ask myself the question do you know a side and its opposite angle the answer is no I do not know a side and its opposite angle so that means I have to use the cosine rule the cosine rule is printed on the formula sheet it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of capital A and the, the problem with this version of the cosine rule is it works out an, a side and you want it to work out an angle so if we do a little bit of swapping around and shift this one over here and shift the other one to the other side so you end up with 2bc cos A equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared then do a bit of dividing you have cos a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc now this is the version of the cosine rule I want to use just remember that b and c are the sides that sandwich the angle so b and c sandwich the angle and that is the other one so you end up with cos of the angle is equal to 12 squared plus 12 squared minus 5 root 13 squared over 2 times 12 times 12 type this into the calculator including brackets around the 5 root 13 and then inverse cos the answer because it's cos a so you have to do inverse cos of all of this and you end up with the answer 97 Four. Right, this question. 
lots and lots of working in this question. So, let's edit the diagram. OA is 3A, so we can write that there, 3A. OB is 3B. OC is 4 thirds of OB, so 4 thirds of 3B. You can just type in the calculator, 4 thirds of 3B. You can't type in the B, you can type in 4 thirds of 3. That's 4, so that means OC is 4B. That means this little bit here must be B. Right. Q is the point on AC such that AQ is three fifths of AC, so Q must be about here somewhere. P is the point on BA, so going from B to A, that is a third of BA, so it's a third in this direction. So let's say it's about there somewhere. And what you're trying to do is prove that OPQ is a straight line. To do this, you need to work out two vectors. You need to work out vector OP from the first letter to the second letter, and from the first letter to the last letter, from O to Q. So, working out vector OP. Working out vector OP. So, this is the route I'm going to take to go from O to P. There's a problem because I don't know what BP is. So, can't work out BP yet because I don't know what BA is. I need to know BA because BP is a third of BA. So BA, if you follow it down here, is minus 3B plus 3A. Minus 3B plus 3A. And that means BP is a third of that. So you divide that by 3, A minus B. And that means OP, which is what you're trying to work out, is up here, 3A, uh, sorry, 3B plus A minus B. So it's 3B plus A minus B, which is A plus 2B. You also need to work out the vector OQ. And OQ goes from O to Q. Oops, I think I'll go this way around, actually. O to Q. Okay. You can't work this out at the moment because you don't know what AQ is. You can't work out AQ because you don't know what AC is. So, oh my God. Right, let's work out AC then. AC goes this way, minus 3A plus 4B. And that means AQ is three-fifths of this. Now, if you type in three-fifths, or you do this with brackets, three-fifths of this, so times both of these by three-fifths, um, and you do this in, I mean, I've, I've done it in both decimal and fraction. If you do it as decimals, so they're not that bad, actually, the decimals, you end up with 2.4b minus 1.8a. That's a vector aq. Now I can work out vector oq. So vector OQ goes from O to Q, so we go along the bottom, 3A, and then we add this one on, add 2.4B minus 1.4A, and when you do that and tidy up, you end up with 1.2A plus 2.4B. Now we just need to write a conclusion. How are OP and OQ related? Can you see that you multiply O P by 1.2 and then you end up with OQ. So 1.2 times OP equals OQ. Okay, next question. Okay, so there's an awful lot to do here. Let's have a look at the bracket first of all. We can simplify that, write it as one fraction. So common denominator needed. So common denominator is 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 3. What do you do to get from 2x minus 5 to this denominator? You times it by 2x minus 3. So you do the same to the 4. Times 4 by 2x minus 3. Put a minus in the middle because there's a minus there. What do you do to get from 2x minus 3 to this denominator? You multiply it by 2x minus 5, so you do the same to the top. 
And then what you need to do is expand the numerator, but do not expand the denominator. Let's expand the numerator. If we do that, we end up with 8x minus 12 minus 6x plus 15. And when we tidy this up and write it as one fraction, we're going to end up with so 2x uh, plus 3 over 2x minus 5, 2x plus 3. Uh, sorry, 2x minus 3, I beg your pardon. Now, it, it looks like something can cancel here, but absolutely not, because um, 2x plus 3 is different to 2x minus 3. So, for the next bit, it says divide. So, when we divide by a fraction, remember we can use the KFC method. You keep the first fraction the same, that's everything in the square bracket. You change it to a times, and you flip the second fraction. So, we're going to flip this one. Now, I do want to flip it, however... I need to just have a look and explore and see if I can do any tidying up or factorizing here. So the top 9x minus 4x cubed can factorize. So x is common, so you end up with x brackets 9 minus 4x squared. Okay, and then what you might notice if you have your sharp mathematical eye is that this is the difference of two squares. It's 3 plus 2x and 3 minus 2x okay so what I'm going to do remember I've flipped this fraction so I'm going to write that in the denominator here now so it's uh, x brackets 3 plus 2x and 3 minus 2x okay the denominator here can be factorized okay how do you factorize this so we draw our two brackets y to 6x as the first term in both. We want numbers that multiply to give 30, but add to give negative 17. What are these numbers? They are negative 15 and negative 2. So we write them in the brackets. We cancel each bracket down, if possible. So this bracket divides by 2, so we can divide that by 2. The other bracket divides by 3, so we divide it by 3 to get 2x minus 5. Then we can write them here. Remember we've flipped the fractions now, so it flips them to a fraction rather. Okay, so we end up with something like this. Now when we're timesing, when we're multiplying, we can cancel brackets diagonally. It's fine to do that. So we can cancel a 2x plus 3 with a 2x plus 3 here, even though it says 3 plus 2x, it's the same thing. Cancel a 2x minus 5 with a 2x minus 5. And what you're left with is 3x minus 1 on the top. And on the bottom, you're left with x brackets 2x minus 3 and then 3 minus 2x. This is the final answer to the question. For the next question, it says work out the area of a sector. So the area of a sector is you use the formula pi times r squared times the angle over 360. Nice and easy. That gives us 215 when you round it to three significant figures. It's quite easy for the last question. This is more complicated. OA and OB are joined to make a cone. Uh, OA and OB are joined to make a cone. Now, what you have to explore about this question is you have to look and understand that the arc length here, AB, when it's joined to make the cone, will look like this. You see, they match. So what is that arc length at the top? What is the arc length AB? There's a formula for arc length. It's 2 pi r times the angle over 360. So the arc length AB is 2 times pi times 12 times the angle 171 over 360 and when you type that into the calculator that gives you 57 over 5 pi that's the arc length there but you see now that arc is a circle it's a circle and the formula for the area of a sorry the um, circumference of a circle is pi d or 2 pi r which with your preference pi d or 2 pi r Let's say I use 2 pi r. So I know that 2 pi r, the circumference of this circle, is equal to 57 
over 5 pi. Yes? Now, if I want to work out r, I can take the 2 pi to the other side where it becomes divide, and I can do something like this 57 pi over, sorry, 57, oops, 57 over 5 pi divided by 2 pi. And you type that into the calculator, although it's a bit messy, you end up with an answer of 5.7 for r. So now I know that the radius is 5.7. The question asks me to work out the vertical height. But you see, if you go back to this question, the sides OA and OB are joined together to make this cone. So where is the 12? Well, it's the side of the cone, isn't it? So you have a right angled triangle here. And that's how you're going to work out the height of this cone. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem here. Um, label the sides, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and when we're working out the shorter sides, we can do, well if I just write it actually, it's a squared plus 5.7 squared equals 12 squared, and that means a is equal to 12 squared minus 5.7 squared, all square rooted, and when you do that you end up with 10.7 six to three significant figures and that's the end of the paper now if you want rough grade boundaries for this paper it's a 90 a grade nine is around about 80 percent a grade eight is about 65 percent seven 53 percent six 43 percent five is 33% and we shouldn't be aiming for any lower than that. That's great. Thank you very much.